This is an instructional video using the Safina Vena Pack system to do an endoscopic radial artery harvest. After making my incision and freeing up the radial artery, I've inserted my soft trocar, and I like that soft trocar that the Vena Packs has, particularly for the radio. Um, and I go in with the tip and start to do my fasciotomy which I can do while I do my dissection, which is another thing I really like about the device. Here I'm identifying the vein that's paired with the artery, and I'm just doing my dissection lateral to the vein. Make a little window, and then go in and cauterize and cut the branch. Now there's not a lot of room uh, in this tunnel when you first start your radial artery harvest. So it's important to take your time and just make little windows and create space and go in with the bipolar cartery and cauterize and cut the branches and the fascia as you move up the tunnel. So I've cauterized the branch and I'm going to back out a little bit and make a little better window and then finish taking that branch and adventitia. And you can see the vein that's paired with the artery is intact and I'm lateral to that. And here's a good shot of the, the pedicle with the radial and the veins on both sides. So you're always doing your dissection lateral to the veins and making windows and then taking the branches as you see them. So I like to make some space above the fascia so that I can more carefully and easily take the fascia down. And you never want to wedge the tip and drive the tip of the device in between the fascia and the radial artery. You don't have to do that with this device. You just create some space do your fasciotomy, and then work lateral to the veins, and, and that, that's how you open up the tunnel. You're not going to push the device over top of the radial artery. You can see if I push that, I damage it. So I'm going to go lateral, make a little space, go in, do my fasciotomy. And I've made space above the fascia. And I'm not worried about any thermal spread because the energy that's delivered with the device is just between the two fine blades. It's a high burst and it's tailored to the tissue that's between there. So the smaller the branch, the less energy that gets delivered. So there's less charring and less thermal spread. And I like to work circumferentially. That will keep the pedicle intact and I think it reduces my chance of avulsing any branches. So here I've made another little window with the tip. I'm not pushing the whole shaft through, just the tip. And I'm going to take this as a pedicle. I think my camera wasn't up and down there so I just made an adjustment in my camera. I'm going to cauterize and cut this branch and this adventitia. And I'm well off the radial artery with the, with the conical tip. Here again, I go to the left side, the right side, posterior, and I'm going to take this as a pedicle circumferentially. There, I probably advanced a little too far um, with my tip, but I'm able to cauterize and cut this branch and control that little bleeding that I have. Now, I don't have a tourniquet up. I'd like to do this without a tourniquet. If I can, I do put a tourniquet on the arm just in case. I get into some bleeding, I can put the tourniquet up and that helps me see. But as you can see, I'm able to see all the structures I need to see um, so that I can cauterize and cut the branches and take this as a pedicle. So again, I'm working circumferentially with the tip, left side, right side, and this way I avoid any avulsions. You can see I have a nice pedicle now. I'm leaving the vein that's paired with the artery intact. 
and I'm well off the radial artery when I'm doing my, my dissection and my branch taking. And here's a, a tiny branch. This is why I like this device, being able to take the branches as I go. I don't have to push past that. I just make a little window, cauterize and cut that tiny branch, and when you see that fascia, you want to you're going to want to back up and then start to work laterally again, and that'll help you open it up, and then you can take the fascia. Here's another tiny branch that I'm able to, to cauterize and cut. And again, I'm going to start to work lateral now that I don't have the fascia opened up above it. I'm going to work lateral, right and left, create a little window above the fascia, then take a little more fascia down. And that's how, my, that's how I approach it. And you can see there's very little thermal spread towards that radial artery. Another reason why I prefer this device now. And you can you know, watch very little thermal spread there just between those two blades. It's tailored to that size of the branch so it delivers the energy that's needed. Here again I'm going to work right side, left side, back and forth. And here's another small branch. I'm just going to make a tiny window. I don't know if I have enough room there to take that. So I'm just going to cauterize it and not try to cut that yet. You want to you can see the vein. I decided to back off and create a little more space before I took that branch. So I'm working lateral to the paired veins. And now... I'm going to take a little fascia, so I'm going to go above the fascia, create some space, and do the fasciotomy. So I'm, I'm never pushing this tip over top of that radial artery underneath the fascia. So when you see the fascia, you just dissect laterally. You move laterally. And that will keep you off the radial artery and open the tunnel up. Here, now I have enough space to take that branch I was working on earlier. So there's the vein, there's the artery, there's a branch of the artery. I'm going to carefully cut that and cauterize it. And again, I'm lateral to my pedicle. I just want to keep that pedicle intact the whole way. Here again, I create some space above the fascia. That allows me to sneak in with my bipolar cautery and do the fasciotomy. So I have a little bit of fascia over here, or advent tissue over here, that I'm going to take. I'm well off the radial artery and I'm not even close to the radial artery with the cautery. Again, I'm working circumferentially, right, left, left, right, posterior, and just slowly opening this tunnel up in the first two-thirds of the forearm, which is a tight space. So take your time in here. And you won't have any bruising or any uh, avulsions of any branches. So again, here I'm just making a little window lateral. And I go posterior. And I have my space now to cauterize and cut that adventitia. And maybe there's a small branch in there too. I'm taking that also. And here I have some space now below, above. And I'm getting close to where this is going to start to open up a little better and not be as tight. 
but I still remain lateral with my dissection. There's a tiny branch. It's going to make a tiny window. It looks like I bolstered that a little bit, but I'm going to go cauterize that branch. Luckily, uh, it left enough of a nub in there that, that it didn't evolve off of the radial. And I'm just working lateral from both sides of my pedicle, leaving that paired vein intact the whole way up. And there, and I have a little space now to be able to take that branch. And if you want, you could identify the two muscles. You can see if you just work lateral to the paired branches, the paired veins, um, you stay off the radial artery completely. Here I make my space above the fascia and then go in with my high density current and just cut that fascia you know, easily with no thermal spread. Again, I'm just gonna create some more space above the fascia. And I'm just working slowly because I want a perfect conduit. I don't want any repair sutures. I don't want any bruising to the to the artery, which can occur with the conical tip if you drive that into a tight space. Pretty soon I'm going to get to the point where this tunnel will start to open up a little bit more like a, a sap in his vein case. But it's a this is a different approach because you're taking the artery in a tight space. And obviously cosmetically this is going to be much better for the patient. So you're always dissecting lateral to the veins. Create a little window and sneak in there and take the branch. If you don't, you know, like the view you have, continue to do a little more dissection to open that window up. It's about two-thirds of the way up the arm, the tunnel opens up. So you're actually able to get anterior with the device. And there's going to be much less resistance about two-thirds of the way up the arm where I'm at right now. Again, just stay disciplined, remain lateral to the veins, and make your windows. At this point, you know, you start to breathe a little more easily because this is where the tunnel opens up and it's much easier to stay off the artery. So notice my tip was too close to the radial. I moved it lateral away from the branch, away from the artery, and then took the branch. And I'll show you that again during this. So I continue to work circumferentially. I go left, then I go right, then I go posterior and just slowly open this tunnel up and you're staying on the veins, the paired veins and not the artery. If, 
As you go up the arm, you're going to actually have more of a pedicle. There's more adventitia, more fat. It's probably going to be attached to this pedicle than when you started. <clears throat> There's my vein. I'm going to stay lateral to that. Take some more branches and adventitia. Here my tip is too close to the artery. I move it lateral and then take the branch. <clears throat> so where your tip is before you do your rotation and cut is important. You want that off the vessel, off the conduit, just underneath the branch or above the branch. You can see how this tunnel opened up nicely about two-thirds the way up the arm. And this is an example of, you know, being patient and creating the window, getting the window that you want before you take a branch. I didn't have the window I wanted. There's the artery, so I'm moving lateral. Just making my window, taking my time. Now I'm closer to getting that that window open so I can take my branch correctly. The conical tip is off the conduit. It's lateral to the vein. So I'm going to move over and create a little more of a window and move lateral with my conical tip so I'm further away from that conduit and then com complete the branch taking right here. So I didn't like where my conical tip was I felt it wasn't lateral enough, and so I made a little more space, and there, I have my window now, my tip's completely off the pedicle, and I'm taking the branch with, with the fat and adventitia attached. Here, I know that I'm away from the vessel. So I'm able to advance, twist, and, and cut that branch and pedicle. So, you know, when you get into a spot where it's tight and you don't see things perfectly, continue to take your time, open things up until you have it so that you can take the branch comfortably and safely. You know, I know that. I've been well off the artery, I'm not getting any thermal spread to it, and I'm seeing exactly what I need to see to cauterize and cut these branches. Again, I don't have a tourniquet up, so you're going to see a little bit of blood, um, but I can still see all my structures clearly. So here's a tiny branch. So you're not going to do much dissection on this. I don't like where my tip is, so I moved it underneath the branch to take this. Here, I moved it underneath the branch. Now I, I have a much better shot getting that branch and being off the conduit. So you don't want to push past any of these branches with the shaft. You're just using the tip. I think it's safer and you're going to decrease the number of volsions you have. Which is really important with the radial. Here I cut that posterior branch. It's really opening up now. Just some adventitia. And when you get up into the 
end of your tunnel, you want to look for large branches, the ulnar artery. Um, those are very important structures to identify because this is where you could potentially get into some bleeding if you're not careful. You could hit a, a large vein. And you always want to know where that ulnar artery is. Fortunately for this patient, I was able to go very far up, very close to the antecubital fossa. There's, there's that pedicle intact. That's what you want to see. And I'm just checking now to make sure I'm completely clear on the right side. Now I've gone up all the way posteriorly, and now I'm going to finish taking the vessel, the conduit down as a pedicle anteriorly. So I'm working lateral to the veins with my dissection. I'm not on the radial artery. So there's much less resistance up here uh, in the top of the forearm. And you know, it becomes more like a, a saphenous vein case at this point. We have a nice tunnel and you can you can work more freely. Here I've put my tip in the right place, my conical tip, so I can take my branch. It's not perfect, so I pull back in, create a little bit better window. And then actually I'm giving some counter traction here in the arm. And now I'm getting that, that branch, that pedicle the way I want it. I'm well off the artery. I'm below the branch with my conical tip, so I rotate down and take that. And you can see you got a great seal there. So a lot of advantages with the Venapax where it's a soft trocar that you're putting on the radial artery in the wrist. Um, the bipolar cautery with the high density energy that's only going in between those two fine blades is reducing your thermal spread and any charring. And it delivers a high energy, so it's going to create a nice seal, so your, your tunnel without a tourniquet stays dry. You can see I got a nice pedicle with both paired veins intact, some adventitious, some adipose tissue, and well off the artery, lateral to the vein. This is where there's large veins that come into view and I have, you know, poked holes in them and had problems with bleeding, so you want to be very careful here with your dissection. You're only using the tip. And here I can take that fat nicely after I made my window. Things are opening up nicely. Continue to move circumferentially, posterior, right, left. Looks like I have a large anterior complex here with a couple veins in it. You know, you'll see that little bit of bleeding without a tourniquet up, but it's okay. I'm going to cauterize and cut that, staying off my vessel. You're going to end up with more pedicle up on that upper forearm, which is nice. Um, and here I'm just 
identifying any bleeding I might have and, and cauterizing now because I'm close to finishing and taking this out of the arm. So I'm way lateral. You see these large veins come into view and you know you're at the end of where you're going to be able to do your, your harvest. So I've noticed I was able to pass quite far up per, uh, posteriorly. So I'm going to open this up a little bit more anteriorly because I have a lot of length uh, with this radial. And uh, this was going to go on a circumflex. So we're looking to try to maximize length if we can. So I'm cleared off posteriorly all the way up. And now I'm just checking lateral, looking for anything that might still be bleeding. Identify any bleeding and, and cauterize and cut that if I have to. So here's a little bit of bleeding. I'm going to take care of that now. So when you're close to extracting the radial from the arm, just check your tunnel. And here I've got this big complex here with I think two, three branches in it anteriorly. And that's going to obstruct me from doing my extraction. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this. And we want to be careful not to avulse a branch here. I'm going lateral both, both sides, a little bit anteriorly. I like to twist when I push through. I think that cuts down on any shearing. And I'm going to take my time here. I'm well off the artery, the top of this tunnel. Um, but I don't like the position of my cone right there. So I'm going to stop reposition and move that into a safe position and rotate advance to take that branch. So there's a big vein coming in. I'm going to leave that alone. I think I have plenty of length at this point. I'm still working on this large complex. At the top, I've taken one of the branches already. I'm making a little more space to create a window to get in there with the bipolar cautery. And if I can just take this down, I'll be ready to extract the artery. You can see the larger the structure the more energy that gets delivered. There's a real-time feedback with this bipolar cautery. And you can see I'm going to be able to cauterize, cut that, get a great seal on it. And now I'm ready to extract. And that's what the artery looked like when I was done. I had no repair sutures. I had no bruising. The pedicle is intact. And we're ready to go.